Imagine seeing them crossing the skies, majestic floating whales. Then imagine those whales dropping bombs on you before floating serenely away. They're not whales, of course. What I'm talking about is a great German invention that pioneered the skyways, the Zeppelin. I'm Indy Neidell. Welcome to a Great War special episode about the German Zeppelins of World War I. Graf Ferdinand von Zeppelin had been an observer with the Union Army during the American Civil War and had seen firsthand the usefulness of the hydrogen-filled observation balloons. While these balloons were attached to a spot on the ground by cables, Graf Zeppelin reasoned that if they could be steered and made to move under their own power, their potential as a mode of transportation could be unlocked. Zeppelin developed and launched his design for a steerable or dirigible balloon in 1900. His efforts finally led to a viable passenger airship design, and in 1910, the world's first airline, the German Airship Transportation Company, or DLAG, which operated regularly scheduled passenger flights between major German cities. And there were plans for expanding operations to all major cities in Europe and beyond. War changed all that. When the war broke out in 1914, there were 11 large airships in operation in Germany and more being built at the Zeppelin manufacturing facilities in Friedrichshafen and Potsdam. The entire fleet was immediately pressed into service by the German Army and Naval High Commands. The Army used the Zeppelins for reconnaissance to determine the number and disposition of opposing ground forces and as tactical bombers. On the Western Front, Zeppelins participated in the attack on Liège in August 1914 and bombarded the city of Antwerp during its siege in September. On the Eastern Front, from August to October 1914, Army Zeppelins were sent on bombing raids against the Warsaw forts and key transportation areas around the city. Zeppelins also saw action during the protracted battles around Przemysl. Raids were conducted against the fortresses of Grodno and Kovno, and plans were even laid for long-range bombing raids against Petrograd. But while several attempts were made, the distance between the airship base and their target was too great. The naval zeppelins were used to patrol the North Sea area, acting as the far-ranging eyes of the fleet. German airships would directly participate as advanced scouts in the naval battle of Jutland. A report published by the British on September 20, 1917 said, It is no small achievement for their zeppelins to have saved the high seas fleet at Jutland to have saved their cruiser squadron on the Yarmouth raid, and to have been instrumental in sinking the Nottingham and Falmouth. The Zeppelins in naval service were also highly successful in detecting and mapping minefields and assisting minesweepers in clearing mines. During the war years, the German Naval Airship Service flew a total of 971 flights on scouting and reconnaissance missions over the North Sea in support of the service navy. Additionally, between the army and naval airships, a total of 220 scouting flights were conducted in support of the Baltic operations. In total, on all fronts, some 1,191 scouting and reconnaissance flights were made during the war. During that same period, 46 bombing raids were conducted in the Baltic area of operations and another 306 in the North Sea and the British Isles. Despite the fact that the raids on England were barely a quarter of the total number of operations, that's what we often remember about German Zeppelins from the Great War. At 9 p.m. on January 19, 1915, the first Zeppelin bombs fell on Britain. This was the first instance of aerial attack on what had otherwise been a nation protected by the sea and its fleet, and to say it came as a shock would be a gross understatement, both for the British and the rest of the world. Nothing like this had ever been seen before, though it would become commonplace in wars thereafter. At first, London was off limits. Kaiser Wilhelm would not approve operations that may damage historical architecture and would not allow the king and the royals to be targeted. By March 1915, the Kaiser had relented and London would be bombed, though initially with only limited targets. The concrete objectives of the raids were to interfere with supply and distribution and prevent equipment from reaching the front, to destroy military facilities, to destroy the Bank of England, to force the British to defend at home and keep troops from the front lines, and of course, to demoralize and terrorize the civilian population. 
The last one totally backfired though. The raids were used as propaganda to increase recruitment and actually stiffened British resolve. The Bank of England was never hit, and the raids continued till the end of the war, with the final raid occurring August 5, 1918. At first, the Zeppelins operated with relative impunity. As a flying machine, they were years ahead of airplanes. None of the British fighter-interceptor aircraft at the time could fly as high or stay aloft as long as a Zeppelin. And each technological advance in airplanes was countered by a Zeppelin advance. Higher and higher the Zeppelins could climb, ultimately reaching ceilings of over 27,000 feet by the war's end. When a Zeppelin did find itself attacked by an airplane, the attacking pilots found that the Zeppelins were surprisingly hard to shoot down. Hydrogen is highly flammable and burns readily, but only when mixed with oxygen. Putting several rounds of machine gun fire through a Zeppelin simply punched holes in one of the many independent gas cells and allowed the lifting gas to leak out. Rarely was a Zeppelin disabled to the point of being shot down by this and could usually leave the combat area and return to base. That was, of course, until the development of the incendiary bullet. The Buckingham bullet was hollowed out and filled with phosphorus. When fired, the friction of the bullet moving down the gun barrel would ignite the bullet and cause it to burn. On September 2, 1916, British Lieutenant William Robinson, using the Buckingham incendiary bullets mixed with explosive bullets, ignited the hydrogen gas in a Zeppelin over the north end of London, becoming the first to shoot one down. Londoners went wild and Robinson was awarded the Victoria Cross for his actions. For the German air crews, this new form of destruction was terrifying. In many cases now, their first notification of being attacked was the large red glow emanating from above their heads. Here's a little Zeppelin story from the war, from Africa actually. In German East Africa, General von Lettau Vorbeck was waging a guerrilla war against the British with meager resources, both in men and material. His former chief medical officer suggested to the German high command the possibility of sending medical supplies through by airship. The high command modified one to make the perilous voyage. The air mile distance between Germany's southernmost Zeppelin base, Yamboli in Bulgaria, and the area where it was thought von Lettau Vorbeck was operating was 3,600 miles, 5,760 kilometers, and the plan was to fly 11 tons of ammunition and three tons of medical supplies to support the general's operations. However, the German high command soon decided von Lettau Vorbeck's situation was too precarious and recalled the Zeppelin mid-flight. By the time it received the recall order and headed back to Bulgaria though, it had reached the Sudan. That Zeppelin, an L-59, had accomplished something pretty remarkable. It had been in flight for 95 hours and had covered 4,200 miles in some of the worst environmental conditions. When they reached Yamboli, they still had fuel for another 64 hours in the air. During the war, 88 Zeppelins were built and deployed. Technology that allows safe air travel today, such as accurate weather reporting, weather radar, long-range communication systems, things that we take for granted now, had not yet been invented. When it was cold, the crews froze. When they flew high, they got altitude sickness. And when they were shot down, it was usually in a raging inferno where they had to decide between burning to death or jumping to their death. They saw action as the eyes of the fleet, as bombers, and as reconnaissance aircraft. And while their success as a weapon of war is debatable, the bravery of the men who operated them is not. Now, it wasn't only Germany that used Zeppelins during the war. Several other nations, including Britain, did as well. I'd like to thank John Armbrost for doing the research for this episode. Thank you very much, John. Uh, if you'd like to see our episode about General von Lettau Vorbeck and what was going on in East Africa, you can click here for our bio about him. Don't forget to subscribe. See you Thursdays.